I want to talk today about a big milestone, the general availability of HashiCorp Terraform 1.0. I want to start by taking a step back to understand how we got here. The story starts almost three years before we ever began coding Terraform. In 2011, AWS introduced CloudFormation. And the very next day, I wrote a blog post and posted it on Tumblr, of all things, saying how impressed I was with this idea. But what I thought we really needed was a tool that supported more than just AWS resources. I wanted a general infrastructure as code tool. And I thought the best way to do this, maybe the only way to do this, was through the power of an open source ecosystem. So in this blog post, I invited someone, anyone, to solve this problem, and I basically gave the idea for Terraform away. A few years passed, and this request I made in the blog post remained unanswered. Meanwhile, the challenges that I posted in that blog post became very real, and they became very real for me personally, and I needed a solution. So we at HashiCorp decided to solve it ourselves. And in July of 2014, we released Terraform 0.1 an open source, cloud agnostic, infrastructure as code solution. Basically, the exact same idea that I presented in that blog post back in 2011. Terraform 0.1 supported only AWS and DigitalOcean. The idea was just to start here and just show how Terraform could support multiple providers and really focus on expanding that in the future. The 0.1 release was more about proving the idea rather than delivering something that was you know, production ready to go. Terraform was far from an overnight success. This is something a lot of people think. Downloads were mostly stagnant for the first 18 months. We even talked at one point about maybe shutting the whole project down. But we believed in what we built, and we felt that long-term, Terraform would live or die primarily based on the ecosystem that we created around it, the providers and resources that it would support. And we knew that building this ecosystem required an active and vibrant open source community because there was no way we could do everything on our own. So what we focused on was making Terraform providers easy to write, easy to use, and continue to iterate on the core workflow to ensure that all the features set of Terraform solved real world problems. By the end of 2016, almost two and a half years after we initially released Terraform, we had over 750 contributors and dozens of providers, including Microsoft, Azure, Google, OpenStack, and more. Downloads started slowly, but they were finally starting to tick up these two and a half years later, and they began doubling every single month. Then in 2017, things really began to take off. I sometimes call 2017 the year of Terraform because this is when we really hit an inflection point from a stagnant project to something that was really starting to succeed. During this year, we announced our first major cloud partnership with Microsoft, where we mutually committed to a full-featured Azure provider. This was huge. This was the first time a major cloud provider very publicly acknowledged and supported Terraform. This was a huge vote of confidence in what we had built. We also introduced an official Terraform provider program. This is a structured program for individuals and companies to introduce official providers into the Terraform ecosystem. This let the provider ecosystem really flourish and we saw a huge growth in the number of providers available for Terraform. That same year, we also launched the Terraform registry so that the community could publish and share reusable Terraform modules so Terraform was easier to use for newcomers to the community. From 2018 to 2020, we began to focus more on commercializing Terraform. The core foundation of Terraform and the ecosystem was at this point relatively established and running on its own. Commercializing Terraform was an important step to ensure the open source project and the company behind it was sustainable. We released Terraform Enterprise and began adding large organizations as paying customers. Meanwhile, we continued to iterate on Terraform and we released the largest, most impactful open source release still to this day, Terraform 0.12. It's been over 10 years since I first wrote that faithful blog post, and over seven years since we wrote the first line of code for Terraform. And now Terraform is officially a 1.0 product. It's amazing to look how far the product has come. Terraform by our records has been downloaded over 100 million times, and today is the de facto standard for cloud provisioning. Today, we count more than 1,000 providers and 5,000 modules in the Terraform registry, and those deliver everything from Domino's Pizza to cloud infrastructure. Of course, we hardly did this by ourselves. Terraform is what it is because of the community around it, the open source contributors, the ambassadors, our users, and our partners. As the community adopted Terraform for infrastructure as code, many large organizations also realized that Terraform had what they needed for successful infrastructure automation. As they scale, these organizations need a standardized approach to compose, collaborate, and reuse infrastructure as code to provision more infrastructure. 
Today, there are more than 1,200 Terraform commercial customers, including some 10% of the global 2,000 and more than 15% of the Fortune 500. World-class organizations like 3M, Samsung, H&R Block, GitHub, and many others are standardizing on Terraform Enterprise to help drive their digital transformations. Terraform is boosting their operational productivity, reducing risks, and increasing the velocity of their application teams. I'm a hands-on developer at heart, and it's always amazing to hear how Terraform is not only helping DevOps teams, but also how it's helping our customers transform their businesses. Here are a few great examples. We have enabled teams that can to, teams to go faster, and that's one of the key things that uh, is a is an outcome for us in terms of of NEF, as we call it. Um, productivity improvements um, really help uh, every bit of the organization so we can get outcomes to our customers faster. So we've chosen to adopt Terraform, initially the open source, um, and then uh, moving on to Terraform Enterprise to give a little oomph to our deployment platform to make sure we scale to our user and uh, engineers' uh, demands. So one of my favorite things about Terraform is that there are really so many ways to structure your approach to the workspaces, states, modules, and code. And so from a simple VM with the necessary surrounding services or entire stacks with the interdependencies, we've chosen a structure that works well for us. And it gives us the ability to provide this cookie cut approach to the product landing zones with then the additional flexibility for making customizations that are then consistent across the stages from development to production. And what this ensures is that the developers are able to work in environments that look and behave uh, very similar to production. Everyone's has more free time, they're not doing stuff that they don't want to do, so you end up with a happier team altogether, which is really nice. In my opinion, that's the best thing about Terraform. It lets us focus on what matters, driving the business and serving our community members. I highly recommend Terraform to anyone. If you're not using it today, you should give it a try. When it comes to why we're so excited about the arrival of Terraform 1.0, that pretty much says it all. Thanks to everyone in our open source community and customer community who have been such an important part of Terraform's journey so far. We look forward to being your partner and making Terraform better and better for a long time to come.